Hi everybody, it's Ms. Aviva from the Ridgefield Public Library in Ridgefield, New Jersey, and since April is National Poetry Month, I'm going to read you some of my favorite books in rhyme. This is The Snatch a Book, written by Helen Doherty and illustrated by Thomas Doherty, published by Sourcebooks Jabberwocky. One dark, dark night in Burrow Down, a rabbit named Eliza Brown found a book and settled down. When a snatch a book flew into town. In every house, in every bed, a bedtime book was being read. Tales of dragons spitting flames, witches playing spooky games, pirates on the seven seas, princesses trying to sleep on peas, and every child in every bed listened hard to each word said. Eliza Brown, at number three, was reading quite contentedly. Her curtains opened, just a chink. She barely had a chance to blink. Her storybook just disappeared! Eliza found that very weird. The little owls on Mommy's lap were quite surprised to hear a tap against their bedroom window glass. Tap, tap! The noise came really fast. Before they'd even looked around, the book was gone without a sound! The wind blew wild across the sky. The smallest squirrel heard a cry. What's that? she whispered to her dad. But then, and this was really bad, before they'd had a chance to look, she'd lost her very favorite book! And so it went, night after night. Books disappeared from left and right. Five books here and six books there. The shelves began to look quite bare. And burrowed down the rumor spread of book thieves under every bed. Eliza Brown, at number three, was keen to solve the mystery. She planned one night to lie in wait and use a pile of books as bait. Long hours passed without a peep. She'd nearly fallen fast asleep. When suddenly Eliza heard a flap of wings. A bat? A bird? Eliza saw a shadow loom, enormous, right across her room. What kind of monster could it be? Eliza thought, you don't scare me. And yet her heart was beating fast. She'd have to face the thief at last. She threw the window open wide and shouted to the thing outside, Stop stealing all our books right now! Just give them back! I don't care how! I'm sorry, came a little voice. I really am. I had no choice. Eliza looked down in surprise. She couldn't quite believe her eyes. So who are you? And what's your name? The creature hung its head in shame. He mumbled with a mournful look. I'm just a little snatch -a book. Eliza nodded solemnly. She sat the creature on her knee. You can't just come and help yourself to every book on every shelf. A tear rolled from the creature's eye, and suddenly, he softly, he began to cry. I know it's wrong, but can't you see? I've got no one to read to me. Eliza sighed. He looked so sad. If he just had a mom or dad to read him stories every night, well then, he might behave all right. That very night, they hatched a plan. And so the snatch -a book began to give back all the books he'd picked. Eliza Brown was very strict. Then, trying hard to prove himself, he stacked them neatly on each shelf. And when he'd made his full amends, Eliza called on all her friends and then told them how he'd worked all night to turn a wrong into a right.
And now, each night in Burrow Down, as darkness falls upon the town, in every house, in every bed, a bedtime book is being read. And if you take a closer book, you might just see the Snatch-a-Book perched happily on someone's bed, listening hard to each word read. And that's the end. I am going to read The Donut Chef by Bob Stack, published by Dragonfly Books. Once upon a summer's day, a donut chef was heard to say, On this street where people stop, I'll open up my donut shop. The store was cozy, made of brick. He got it ready super quick. He washed the walls, he swept the floors. He hung a sign above the doors. Donut land. Ooh, I totally want to shop there. He stacked his pots, he cleaned his pans, he dusted off the ceiling fans. He grabbed a spoon, then turned a knob, and set the stove to do its job. That donut chef, he worked so hard by mixing flour, sugar, lard. He baked his donuts fresh at dawn, then hoped by noon they'd all be gone. At first, one man walked in the store. But then the line snaked out the door. The donuts soon were all the rage, adored by folks of every age. Soon word got out of this success, and to another chef no less, who said to him, Your shop is through when my store opens next to you. Uh-oh. Indeed, with two shops on the block, both selling donuts around the clock, well, people asked, you might have guessed, whose donuts are the very best? Two donut shops on one small street. For customers, they did compete. Each used his donut selling tricks before he closed his doors at six. If one chef, dro one chef dropped his donut cost, the next would add more chocolate frost. If one would scream, buy two, get three, the other yelled, but mine are free. They made new flavors, quite bizarre, like cherry frosted lemon bar and peanut brickle buttermilk and gooey cocoa mocha silk. They tried new shapes beyond just rings. Their donuts were such crazy things. Some were square and some were starry. Some looked just like calamari. Some were airy, some were coney. Some resembled macaroni. It wasn't long before the sweets looked not at all like donut treats. They'd lost their taste. They'd lost their soul. They'd even lost their donut hole. The chefs continued with their feud, cooked up more crazy frosted food. Then in walked little Debbie Sue, a teeny girl, just barely two. She looked at all the donuts weird, the flavor strange, the topping smeared. She looked and looked, but could not find the one that was her favorite kind. What do you think? Do you want to try any of these? Excuse me, mister, said the tyke, but where's the donut that I like? It isn't here, it isn't there. You think it's under that eclair? I hope not. Look what's on that eclair. Ugh. Oh, surely, said the chef with grace. Your donut's in this donut case. We've donuts laced with kiwi jam and served inside an open clam. Donuts made with huckleberry. Don't be scared, they're kind of hairy. And donuts made from spiced rum pear, so popular with millionaires. We've donuts lighter than a wisp. Donuts gooey, donuts crisp. Donuts dressed just like a shiner. Donuts major, donuts minor. And if we don't have it, you can bet it can't be found. At least not yet. The choice of donuts left her dazed, said Debbie Sue. But I want glazed. The crowd went silent, jaws hung low. A flavor choice from long ago. No one orders donuts glazed. The chef was startled, then amazed. A donut glazed? 
That's so old time from when a donut cost a dime. Hey, I like glazed, a voice chimed in. Me too! I love them! Where have they been? Then all the people sang in praise of simple donuts dipped in glaze. The clever chef then got a thought and turned his stove to super hot. Flour, sugar, just a cup. In a bowl, he mixed it up. He let it cook, knew what to do. And ding, the timer chimed on cue. Your donut's ready, Debbie Sue. She popped the donut in the air, and in her mouth, it landed there. She chewed it, smiled, and gave a wink. Mmm, there's nothing quite like glazed, I think. The crowd called out and yelled, I'm next! Bought glazed delights by cash and checks. The donut chef, he wrote the line, Amazing glazed! His store's new sign. Now throngs of people happily wait to buy his donuts by the crate. The donut chef, he'd never guessed, of all the flavors he did test, that most folks love a glazed the best. And that's the end. Today I am going to read Bonnie and Ben Rhyme Again by Mem Fox, illustrated by Judy Horchuk and published by Beachland Books. Bonnie and Ben were a boisterous pair who loved yelling rhymes in the open air. So they said their goodbyes with a kiss and a hug and went out for a walk with their friend Skinny Doug. Skinny Doug was the one who time after time had kept them entranced with rhyme after rhyme. So as they set off, he said, where will you start? You now know so many, you know them by heart. Soon, a small hill appeared up ahead. There was no hesitation. The two of them said... Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. And Skinny Doug said, I love it! I love it! Well done and hurrah! Can you tell me another? How clever you are! When a couple of sheep appeared up ahead, there was no hesitation. The two of them said, Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, bringing their tails behind them. And Skinny Dog said, I love it! I love it! Well done and hurrah! Can you tell me another? How clever you are! When plums on a pump plum tree appeared up ahead, there was no hesitation. The two of them said, Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his pudding and pie. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I! And Skinny Doug said, I love it! I love it! Well done and hurrah! Can you tell me another? How clever you are! When a hairy black spider appeared up ahead, there was no hesitation. The two of them said, Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. And Skinny Doug said, I love it! I love it! Well done and hurrah! Can you tell me another? How clever you are! And when magnificent roses appeared up ahead, there was no hesitation. The two of them said, Ring around a rosy, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. And Skinny Doug said, I love it, I love it, well done and hurrah. Can you tell me another? How clever you are. And when their very own house appeared up ahead, it was already late. There were stars overhead. So without hesitation, the two of them said, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, 
like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And Skinny Doug said, I love it, I love it, hip hip and hooray. What a beautiful rhyme for the end of the day. Goodbye and good night, dear Bonnie and Ben. We'll say some more rhymes when we all meet again. And not long after that, in the room down the hall, young Bonnie and Ben said nothing at all. And that's the end. I am going to read Dinosaur's Love Underpants by Claire Friedman, illustrated by Ben Court and published by Aladdin. Dinosaurs were all wiped out a long way back in history. No one knows quite how or why. Now this book solves the mystery. It all began when cavemen felt embarrassed in the nude. So someone dreamed up underpants to stop them from looking crude. The dinosaurs roamed everywhere, all teeth and huge long necks. But scariest and meanest was Tyrannosaurus Rex. When T-Rex saw man's undies, he roared with deafening rants. I don't want to eat you up. I want your underpants. T-Rex stole a furry pair, but his briefs quickly ripped. He couldn't get them past his feet. Oh, whoops! Watch out! He tripped! Triceratops was happy wearing undies on every horn. So Styracosaurus snatched them and they ended up all torn. The pants from woolly mammoth coats made Stegosaurus itchy. Diplodocus was really mad. His briefs were way too pinchy. We're running low on underpants, the cavemen squake, quaked in shock. These dinos are undies crazy. They've completely run amok. Soon undies were flying everywhere, all torn by tooth and claw. The dinosaurs were fighting in a great briefs tug of war. The mighty underpants war raged all night. Thump, pow, bash, drunk, clout. The fighting got so crazy, all the dinos were wiped out. The next day, out the caveman crept and cheered at what they saw. Hooray! Our biggest enemy is now at last no more. So when you put your undies on, always treat them with great care. Don't forget, brief saved mankind. They're not just underwear. And that's the end. I am going to read to you each Peach Pear Plum by Janet and Ellen Albert, published by Viking. And this is kind of a nursery rhyme hide and seek book where each page has a character who's hiding somewhere in the picture. And after I read the rhyme, I'm going to hold it up to the camera and give you a second to try and find the person that you're supposed to be finding. It goes like this. Each Peach Pear Plum, I spy Tom Thumb. You see Tom Thumb in that picture there? What's he doing? Tom Thumb in the cupboard. I spy Mother Hubbard. Can you see Mother Hubbard? Where is she? Mother Hubbard down the cellar. I spy Cinderella. Cinderella on the stairs. I spy the three bears. Where are those three bears? Three bears out hunting. I spy baby bunting. Okay, that's a baby in a basket. Baby bunting fast asleep. I spy Bo Peep.
Remember, Bo Peep has sheep. Bo Peep up the hill. I spy Jack and Jill. What happened to Jack and Jill? Jack and Jill in the ditch. I spy the Wicked Witch. Uh-oh. You see her? The Wicked Witch over the wood. I spy Robin Hood. Robin Hood in his den. I spy the bears again. Do you see them too? Three bears still hunting. I spied baby bunting. I think the bear spied her too. Baby bunting safe and dry. I spy plum pie. Ooh, yum. Do you like some of that? Now plum pie in the sun. I spy everyone. Can you see all of the characters from each of the rhymes? There's Tom Thumb and Mother Hubbard and Cinderella and the three bears and Baby Bunting and Bo Peep and Jack and Jill and Robin Hood and the Wicked Witch. Do you see everybody there? And that's the end.